Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Guestman, coming to you live on Thursday night, January 18th, just one day before the MLS Super Draft takes place on Friday, and of course, just four days away. That's right, four days away from your LA Galaxy coming in and starting their 2018 preseason. Lots of things happening, lots of rumors happening. Again, the draft is coming up. Will the Galaxy even make it to the draft? Could they possibly trade out of their very top pick in order to chase the striker they've been tracing all this offseason? That's something we're certainly going to talk about in only 45 days. Count it. I know you're laughing at me. 45 days until the LA Galaxy open up the MLS season, the 2018 MLS season against the Portland Timbers at StubHub Center. It's on a Sunday, March 4th. Make sure you get your tickets for that. That is happening very, very soon. But before we get to anywhere, before we do anything else, please welcome to the show the man, the myth, and the legend. He's from Guys in Short Sports, a podcast that I have been on a, a couple of times and I was happily a, a guest and had a ton of fun on there. He is known as the Portuguese Hammer. Please welcome to the show Galaxy Expert, uh, Mr. Eric Vieira. Eric, thanks for stopping by, buddy. Thanks for having me on the show. Much appreciated. Yeah, we this uh, is, uh, yeah the second leg of our home and home series. That's, yeah, that's you, right. You come to us now. It's my turn to to come play on Corner of the Galaxy. So that, I'm excited to be here. That makes a lot of sense, and we're glad to have you here. Um, you know, give everybody a little bit of a, a history with the podcast and and what you guys have been doing. I know there's a soccer. Are you, have you guys got the soccer specific one? Yeah, we're, we're that's in the works. So a little bit about guys in short sports, Los Angeles. Uh, it started about a year and a half ago group of four friends and myself, we started a podcast to cover basically all things LA sports. So we got Dodgers, Lakers, Angels, Clippers, Rams, any any LA sport. And of course, the LA Galaxy, uh, being an LA Galaxy fan, my history with the team, uh, my dad took me to the first LA Galaxy game at the Rose Bowl versus the New York, New Jersey Metro Stars. So <laughs> yes. still remember going to that game. So I've been a Galaxy fan ever since. And believe it or not, not all Los Angeles sports fans want to hear about the Galaxy. So I feel like I'm doing doing some, some work spreading the gospel of the LA Galaxy over there. Do, so, doing the Lord's yeah, work for exactly. sure. I, so, I know, but you have to deal yeah, with Ben over exactly, there. Exactly. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I know so we, we have a you know a resident soccer hater. So <laughs> part of the fun is getting him giving having him give me a hard time and and trying to to preach that galaxy gospel. And then of course we have a few offshoot shows. Uh, one of them is the Guys in Shorts FC. It's a soccer show. We were looking to start at the beginning of the 2018 season, but uh, with the U.S. crashing out of the World Cup, we kind of recorded an emergency episode. <laughs> right. So, so that's up if if you want to check it out. And uh, a, few, a few offshoot shows with the Kings focus called the Kings Realm. We got a Rams show called the Rams House. So we got a nice little family of podcasts doing our thing, covering all things Los Angeles sports. Yeah, you guys do a great job. And I always have a ton of fun. Um, I don't know if it's the alcohol. Yeah, or... I was going to say, there's no whiskey in here, so <laughs> it's going to be an interesting night for me. We'll see how how I adapt. Well, I, we have a bunch <laughs> to talk about, so I think we'll somehow manage to get uh, get through. Eric, tell everybody your Twitter handle, by the way. My Twitter handle is, handle is at G-I-S Hammer. So it goes off that Portuguese hammer nickname. Portuguese hammer. By yeah. the way, that was one of our first questions is how you got the hammer nickname. You <laughs> so want to tell everybody what it, that is? It's not really an exciting story. It's, uh, you know, the friends who I actually do the podcast with, we used to all work together. So we went out for a bowling out outing. And uh, at one point in the evening, I gave up on bowling and just started chucking that six pound ball as hard as I could. And, right. you know, a couple of my friends said, you're throwing it with the hammer. You're the Portuguese hammer. <laughs> And it was kind of stupid and silly, and there's only two people who call me that, and of course the host of Guys in Shorts Los Angeles, Jeff uh, Wilson, he calls me that. So the first show, he introduces me as the Portuguese Hammer, and I had no idea he was going to do that, so now every show, that's... How he introduces me. So instead of backing off, and uh, I leaned into it. So right. I'm, I'm going to stick with it. That's good. And 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 your wife's name is because I have somebody in the chat room here who's making inappropriate uh -oh. comments about uh -oh. you already. Yeah, her name's Melissa. That's uh, not good. It, it is. It, it is, is Melissa. Uh -oh. Okay, so you're you're uh -oh. okay. She's, a, she's she's watching you already. I was going to say I hope she's not mentioning my hammer on on the, on the air. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, okay, so far she just says he's handsome. So oh, I didn't. You know. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> well, it's a good thing it's her. <laughs> Could create some other problems at home. I was going to say that's how it goes. All right, so uh, we get moving towards the LA guy. Galaxy now, and again, like I said, just four days until they start the 
preseason. We've been counting it down on Corner of the Galaxy uh, ever since, I think, 65 days. Everybody's been making fun of me since then. It's, it's given me some anxiety seeing the <laughs> four days, because it's really not in four days. Like you said, it's 45 days, but seeing the countdown of the preseason starts, I think, taking that into consideration. Yeah, it is. And, and it's all, again, it is happening quickly. Now, there, there's lots of people criticizing the LA Galaxy, saying they only have 22 players on the roster. Mm-hmm. Now, I would like to point out that seems to be 10 players more than LAFC right now, <laughs> just true. just in case people wanted to pump the brakes. Gotta use facts. Gotta use facts here, <laughs> right? So 10 more players. Uh, but the, the LA Galaxy don't have a striker, and that seems to be the focus, and that will be the focus of this show. Absolutely, almost everything we talk about is going to have something to do with the LA Galaxy attempting to get a striker in one way or another, whether it's through the draft, through trades through loans however they can possibly figure out to do it they're still without a striker or as I constantly remind people, the LA Galaxy have three strikers. <laughs> just nobody likes any of them yeah. um, in terms of starters, right? Jossie's artist is one, Ari Laster is the other, and Bradford Jamison the fourth is the third one. So there are three strikers. Uh, but it Technically. Is te- you got them on a technicality. Technically. They also play some other, uh, other uh, positions as well. So that's what we'll look at. Um, we got the draft coming up, which is, of course, I think it's, it's pulling a lot of... It's the super draft, by the way. I hate to correct <laughs> you. Yeah, whatever, yeah. <laughs> MLS and it's uh it's fun fun yeah, wording. It's actually the super draft presented by Adidas. <laughs> of if course, you really of wanted course. if you really wanted to get into Gotta it. Cash uh, those checks. <laughs> that's right. Um, I, I wish they would they would <laughs> cash my checks or, or send me a check. That would be nice too. Um but no, you have the MLS super draft coming up. Uh, it's taking place in Philadelphia. This is on January nineteenth. It's always great to do a podcast less than twenty four hours before something <laughs> important's gonna happen. Absolutely. So Im- immediately right now, if it is past uh let's see, about nine nine AM, ten AM and you're listening to this podcast, the super draft has already happened. <laughs> It will kick off at 8 a.m. Pacific time. MLSsoccer.com will carry that, uh, both rounds one and two. Uh, there are four rounds to the Super Draft. Now, if you want to go back into history, it used to be that there were two rounds of the MLS Super Draft, and then they had two of, like, the Reserve Draft or the, uh, I forget, like, the Auxiliary Draft or something like <laughs> I'm that. I'm sure there's a special name for that they, also. They made it all four rounds, but only two of them were televised, and then the other two rounds, rounds three and four, actually happened on January 21st via a conference call. <laughs> Exciting. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, it, it's not even like Skype. It's not even, like, you know. You know, I'd like to meet the the MLS diehards who are uh, who are who, can, who, who want to follow the conference call who for find the yeah, conference call number p- yeah. picks thirty through sixty. They're really interested. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah. So so you have this. So the LA Galaxy have four picks in the MLS Super Draft. Now I've gone over this before. I've told you where they have the picks and, and where everything's going. Now the the big pick that they have and the one that I think the most focus will be put on, as it should be, is in the first round they pick second overall behind LAFC, who has the first overall pick because they are the expansion team. They actually have the first overall pick in every single round, which I think is interesting as well. So Mm -hmm. one, two, three, and four, they have the first pick. The LA Galaxy will pick second overall. And then in the second round, they have a 17th pick, which is 40th overall. Third round is second pick, 48th overall. So they're going to get 40 and 48th. And then the fourth round is the 21st pick or the 90th overall. It's way, way, way down there. Which is interesting because the talk when you read these mock drafts about these players... Uh, the top five picks are saying, well, they may get some MLS minutes. And to think about the 90th pick, I mean, they were really, really stretching you know, was, with these I was, guys. I was going to say, if you, I, hope, I hope for the best for them. If you're, be look, positive. if you're looking for draft picks, the thing is, for the most part, you're probably looking at somebody who might get some senior team minutes. That's, mm-hmm. And I think you said that well. Mm-hmm. That's the best case scenario. Yes, absolutely. I, and I don't think that you should expect anything more. MLS mm-hmm. has changed from the fact that Omar Gonzalez was picked in, in 2009 and then started most of the game. Yeah. That's, that's unlikely to happen. Gone. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's unlikely to happen. Um, but the LA Galaxy have been notoriously uh, um, shy with the draft. Absent, yeah. yeah, absent. <laughs> Bruce Arena just mm-hmm. like, eh, I'm good. You know, yeah. we traded everything. We're good as long as we <laughs> trade away our first round. So I don't have to be here. We're we're good. And to be fair, the roster construction during those years was set. A lot of pieces didn't need to be added via the draft. That's and that's sort of the whole thing. Is you look at it now, and the Galaxy are in a different position. They do have still. They have technically eight spots still open on the mm-hmm. roster. Now I expect that they're going to show up to camp, and that there's going to be some guys who are trialists in mm-hmm. camp whenever it starts. So I expect that you're going to pick probably three or four trialists. You may have one or two draft picks that probably make it to the roster, mm-hmm. um, and then you know maybe one or two empty spots. Maybe you save a summer spot. However it goes, but you're, the LA Galaxy are allowed to have thirty total roster spots the last two 29 and 30 are reserved for homegrown players they already have two of those so technically they can just push them to that spot and that's great um but that's sort of how it works and and if you look at it the roster and how it's constructed uh one through 20 are the senior team roster and then you have 21 through 28 are the reserve roster and then that 29 and 30 are the homegrown okay just Perfect. in case so and one through 20 is salary cap 
Anything outside of that is not salary cap. Which is important. Which is important to remember yeah. whenever how you do it and so, how it gets moved. And that's why it's good to have those homegrown players way out there on the on that uh, 29, 29 and 30. 30. Yeah, so this is what we have. Uh, again, the uh, the MLS Super Draft kicks off on January 19th at 8 a.m. Pacific time, uh, rounds one and two on MLSsoccer.com. Now, everybody's going through their their mock drafts, Eric. Um, and we've been yeah. re- we've been reading <laughs> yeah. them. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I'm the guy who makes fun of people for doing <laughs> mock fantasy draft, mock, mock drafts, drafts yeah. and here I am doing the deep dive into... MLS super draft. Yeah, so. yeah, I can, I can, yeah. I can feel your pain. These, these are college students. Yes. Um, short seasons in college, it's really difficult. So most of these guys don't play four years. Most mm-hmm. of them play one or two years. Uh, some guys play three, four years. Um, some of the top guys that are, are sort of out there right now. But the LA Galaxy get a chance to pick high up in the first round. They get a very good player and a possibility of a player who can make a real difference. So, so who are some of the names that you're that you're thinking about or that have yeah. been preached about in other places? Yeah. So the, the interesting thing about these college players is like you mentioned very few of them play four years and it's almost a red flag if they do because if they were worth a, a mlf mls draft spot they'd probably come out sooner uh, but again looking at these mock drafts looking at the analysis of these college players there's the same four names that kind of bounce around the top and with the galaxy picking second um, the top two picks on a lot of these mock drafts are defenders. So the first one is uh, Tomas Hilliard Arce, who's out of Stanford. So Stanford is a three-time defending national champion. Right. So you're getting someone who is a champion, a proven champion. Uh, word on the street is that he's a leader. He's someone who's good in the locker room. Uh, the, the knock on him is he's not necessarily a high ceiling. He's not going to develop more than where he is. But if the Galaxy know what they're getting and they feel like he's MLS ready and can uh, help bolster the defense, then that's someone that they would look at. Yeah, it is interesting, and, and people right now are just banging their heads against the wall because they're like, you just <laughs> Why are we talking a center back? You just picked a defender. Exactly. The Galaxy well, have defenders. Yes, absolutely. Right? But, but this is sort of... It's, it, do you want best available player... Or your, do you are go you, for a position of need? Position, and that's always the argument. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, the the general rule in drafts across every sport is best it's available, available player because it, you want the best. Available, you could you could do something. You can you can mm-hmm. trade that. You can you can mold that into something that could be very good and therefore cheap mm-hmm. uh, whenever you develop yours yeah. yourself. Especially yeah, first pick rookie rookie contract. Right, right. I mean, you know, sixty five thousand yeah. dollars basically. You're, you're you're pretty good on that. So um, that's why you would look at center back. And again, I I'm, I don't even want to look at the chat room yet. Um, <laughs> that would I'm make sure. sense. And and there's a bunch of people who are who are saying Eric that this is where the galaxy will go. And mm-hmm. we also have to be careful here. And one of the big caveats that we have to put on this is the LA Galaxy have eight of eight international slots taken right now. Absolutely. We expect that they're probably going to get one more um, because they're chasing a couple internationals that are strikers, and so you imagine that there's one more. But they must have a plan for some some type of workout with the international spot. The the other the other things that have th- been thrown out there is you know do they move Joao Pedro, which is unlikely. They paid six hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars for him. He only costs one hundred fifty thousand dollars. And the uh, hair, yeah, you don't want to get rid of that. Then they can't get rid of the ha- <laughs> hair either. Of course not. Um, and then a uh, Michael Ciani, of course, is the Galaxy could end up eating that contract. That was yeah. a bad contract. Yeah, that, that it that it seems stings. like one. That yeah. one stings. And that's six hundred twenty two thousand dollars or something like. That, that they just eat and yeah, it doesn't hit the cap, but they, you know, yeah. AEG's got to write a check for 622 <laughs> and you send Michael yeah. Ciani off. Adios. Have I'd, a nice day. I'd like to go somewhere and get paid 600 grand to. <laughs> To fail at my job, that'd be nice. You know, the, the whole thing is he could end up being okay this yeah. year, and and that's I understand sort of that. so so it's one of those things that you you looked at what he did last year, and Siggy Schmidt said it, and uh, I've talked to other coaches who who sort of knew of him and said, hey, he wasn't ready when he came in. Mm. Um, everybody sort of understands that he hadn't played in a really long time, and then he yeah. gets thrown in, and you it, know, it's a tough stuff. thing because I, I was critical of him last season. I didn't think, I mean, especially given the reported money that he was being offered, I I didn't see it. Uh, but you, you have to give him the benefit of the doubt. If he hadn't played in a while, uh, we'll see. But I, I didn't see even flashes of, of, of something that's useful for the Galaxy. So hopefully we're all wrong. And, right, and, and he proves us all wrong. And but, he's the second coming of Yellow Vondam. Yeah, which no, I don't, I don't, I don't imagine. <laughs> I don't imagine either. All right, so there's the uh, there's one of them. Let's. What is another option possibly well, the Galaxy? Well, the go other with? one, the other talk is João Moutinho, who's a Portuguese uh, center back or midfielder. Portu- Portuguese. <laughs> exactly. I knew you were going to. I had to yes. bring it. Uh-huh. You knew I had to bring the Portuguese player into it. Um, but he's one that LAFC is actually projected to possibly take first. But the issue is him being a defender and then being an international. Right. That's an issue. But the the 
talk on him is he's actually the more skilled player. He's the more versatile player. And given what Siggy has said about wanting defenders who want, could play the ball at their feet or having a, a, you know someone who could be creative, uh, he came from the Sporting Lisbon Academy. So that's obviously, you know, they've seen the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Nani, Luis Figo. Not saying that, you know, he's Cristiano he, Ronaldo. He's Cristiano Ronaldo. That's what, that's <laughs> what you were just it's, saying. It's good company. It. You know, it. it's good company. He's obviously been developed with a, a top-notch academy. But again, the international spot becomes an issue. And then the fact that he's a defender becomes an issue. So if the Galaxy are going for best player available, those top two players, um, Tomas Hilliard Arce and uh, João Moutinho, are probably the top two of best available. But if they wanted to go in an yeah. attacking direction, there are a couple other players. All right, well. all right so who do, I, I imagine that uh, John Baccaro is, is one of them. Do you have him on your list? I don't have him okay. on my list. All right, I go with Mr. Travis Clark over okay. at uh, Top Drawer Soccer in this one, and uh, John Baccaro is a Wake Forest uh, player. He is a forward, six foot three, 165 pounds. Um, this is a guy who can come in and, and sort of help to boost the, the team's scoring woes. He, he's not the typical number nine, but they feel like, and, and Travis Clark, who does an excellent job, by the way, um, really is the expert on college players whenever it comes to it, nice. says that uh, he, you know he's the right kind of talent to draft in and give him a chance as a goal scorer and playmaking, leading that line. So this is, listen, if you're going for depth right now and you look across the Galaxy's roster, and I think they're fairly well positioned at almost every position except for striker, and they don't yes. have a starter, and they could use some depth. And that's mm-hmm. those are both good things that you could you probably need, um, especially with Giovanni Dos Santos, Jonathan Dos Santos probably not going to be there, so you, you need uh, for the World Cup, I imagine yes. they're both going to the World Cup. Um, so when they're gone, they're, they're going to be gone, and so you're going to need more offensive players. Now, the Galaxy have, like we talked about before, Bradford Jameson. Um, if Jossie Zardes is still on this team, and, and again, of course... Don't, don't check the chat room, chat room while you say those names. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> um, so it, it's it's one of those things that, he, when you look at it, that the depth-wise, where the LA Galaxy still need to add butts. They need attackers. They, they need, need attackers. And, and, and given their goal differential last season, they, they need to make that up. It seems like they're bolstering the defense. They're addressing that issue, so now... We need to get the flip side of the coin. We need to get some attackers. So if they have someone who has, you know, on went on a tear in college and was able to score goals, or has shown at that point, it's even if they show flashes and ability. You know, do they have, you know, have they shown plays where they can make talent? And you'd hate to pick a guy just on a couple plays, but if it's there, then it's something that you can develop and hopefully foster. So uh, yeah, if John Baccaro, if he if he's six three, sounds like a goal scorer, that would definitely be something that could help. Uh, the Galaxy. A couple other names that I've seen is uh, Francis Atuahene from Michigan. Mm-hmm. Uh, they say he's a speedster. Uh, the issue again, he's an international, being Ghanaian. Right. But but if if you're you know upset about Boateng possibly leaving, he's essentially f- he's five nine, so not very tall. <laughs> but he's a taller Boateng still. You know, even at five nine, so you know you're getting a taller speedster. He could replace uh, your guy, and uh, apparently he has a finishing touch. So if you give me a taller Boateng who could finish. I'd gladly take that, uh, but uh, the international spot's an issue. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, at yeah, 5'9", he towers over <laughs> Boateng. Uh, the he, monstrous 5'9". Five 5'9", nine. Five nine, you know, that's the, at least whenever I interview Boateng, I feel good about myself. I may be the <laughs> oldest guy in the room, like, in terms of all the players, but, not um, the shortest. but I'm not the shortest, so that makes me feel okay. And then, is there anybody else you have on your list that you sort of wanted to hit up? And again, just the with the international spot being an issue with the Tua Hene from Michigan, Mason Toya is another... Um, forward from Indiana. So he's another one that they're saying he's 6'3", 180, had 10 goals as a true freshman. So again, uh, if you're in college too long, maybe you're not talented enough to play. It's kind of that paradox that, you know, uh, is it worth it? But it seems like he's able to play a lot of comparisons. What I was reading is comparing him to Kyle Laren. So if you can get a Kyle Laren well, yeah. type in the draft, yeah. then that's that's a no-brainer and he wouldn't take up a, an international spot. That's so see, and those that, are the big four that I've seen. And I feel like if the Galaxy are picking, they're picking a domestic player. Yeah. Right? It just doesn't make any sense to burn an international spot on somebody who may not even make the roster. I mean, mm-hmm. this is, you're, even with the second overall pick, <laughs> there's no guarantee that's, this guy comes up and thing. starts. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and not even, doesn't even make the 30-man roster. Maybe he He's loaned down to LA Galaxy 2. I mean, Josh Turnley was the last sort of draft pick that everybody sort of remembers, mm-hmm. and he's no longer with the team, but he spent some time down at LA Galaxy 2. So that's the likely path for some of these guys mm-hmm. is to come in, possibly be a reserve roster guy. Um, and you're talking, you know, we're not going to get into the second round, into the yeah. second round, <laughs> all right, because yeah, God, we've exhausted our, uh... our, our knowledge on college <laughs> players, all right? That, and enough. that took a bunch of cramming for us to do as well. And, and the beauty of this, when most people are listening to this, that Galaxy will have either traded their pick or picked someone who we haven't even discussed. So that's the beauty of, of recording a podcast. Well, oh, yeah, we're wrong already. <laughs> we are already wrong, which, I love is, it. which is good. That's always fine. Um, now we get to the big question, though. And a- as you said, you know, being wrong almost instantaneously, mm. um, the LA Galaxy have been rumored now to be trading away that second 
overall pick. And it makes some sense. Um, what do they need? They need a striker. Um, and possibly in a package, they can package that pick either to somebody for cash, which they can use the cash to get a striker, or they can just straight up trade that pick to whoever they're going to be getting. Um, but if you're going to make that deal... That happens basically from from now, now as we're until recording tomorrow, yeah. until tomorrow morning. I was going to say, I'm waiting to get that update. After I, <laughs> Now that I've mentioned all these names, I'm waiting to get the update that the Galaxy have traded their pick. I was going to say, it's it's the whole thing where we'll sit here and we'll make the show really long <laughs> because we're sure something's going to happen and we're just waiting for it to happen. Um, so that, that's sort of how it goes. So this is this is where we sit now. Um, the hunt for Ola Kamara now could include, we, we've talked about targeted allocation money and general allocation money. That's a given, in, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Um, Jossie's artist, that's a given. So whatever you're getting for Kamara, you're, you're giving away Jossie's artist and you're giving away Jam and Tam, all right? Yep. So that, that makes sense. Jam no? and Tam. I came on the show just to hear Jam, jam and Tam. Jam and Tam? Yeah. That's good. That's because I'm <laughs> sure you don't get to go into Jam and Tam. You don't tam. hear that anywhere else. It's always fun. Um, so, so by the way, Michael Araujo's in the chat room as well. Oh, so beautiful. Mike, we Mike, love Mike. We, Mike's the best, and uh, we, we, he's obviously the voice. I don't know. People should know this. They should know. They should, but Mike, Mike is the voice that you hear at the beginning and end of our podcast. He's also the voice of the LA Galaxy, and of course, your uh, your angels, your Los, Los Angeles, Angeles angels, angels of Anaheim. Yep. Yes, I, I got that right. No problems. <laughs> um, so, so Mike's in the chat room as well. So, hi, Mike. Um, but as we go through this. Um, there's this is this has been sort of the rumors. Now we go into Paul Tenorio. Uh, we've had Paul on the show. Uh, Paul's a great guy and really good at what he does. Uh, Paul Tenorio says that the Galaxy are still engaged with talks with Columbus about Ola Kamara. We knew that. In fact, I told you that about a day before Paul did. But Paul's better at this than yes. I am. So we, we there's give, smoke, there's fire. That's right. We we already said that, and I had talked to you and basically said that the LA Galaxy. Listen, I know we only know two names, and everybody's mm-hmm. freaking out. Why are we so focused on Kamara, or why are we so mm-hmm. focused on Rodrigo Aguirre as well? And your answer is that there are more names out there that we don't know. Yeah. Um, there's that's probably true. up to five at one point. So okay. I don't know if they've scaled that back, but I had heard up to five, which is a lot. Yeah. Okay. And that means there's three other players whose names we don't know that no could idea. still be a striker and be brought into this position. So. And that's nice to hear for those uh, who go into galaxy panic mode. <laughs> they don't have a striker. We're not doing anything. I'm sure they're working on something. It's just, you know, obviously not everyone's going to know about it, but it is frustrating that. You want it now. You know what? Siggy <laughs> Schmidt does not call me up every time he decides that. Which, by the way, Siggy, if you're listening, I feel the, please feel the line feel free. is open. <laughs> yeah, the line is open. I'm here. You can text me anytime. Middle of the night, it's fine. I'll I'll, I'll be there. Um, but no, so that's where it is. So that's what we know about that, and that could possibly mean we talk Zardis, we talk Tam Jam, and it could be a draft pick that is included in yes. that. Well, uh, Sam Steschkel came in as well, and Sam is another excellent reporter who off the top rope he came dude, in with the, the chair here. Uh, yeah, I know it was. It, this is this is some great stuff, in, including these guys. Listen, I'm so in awe of what these guys do. Mm-hmm. I try to provide as much information as I can. These guys have such better sources than me, um, but I'm more galaxy specific. They're league wide, which I can't even keep track of the galaxy. I don't. <laughs> know how you would do this league wide but anyway uh, Sam Steschko comes in and reports that Emmanuel Boateng's name has been included in the trade talks now panic alarms sound <laughs> throughout LA Galaxy land and the arguments begin and I have been on purpose arguing both sides of this trade because it is an argument for both sides there's so you're not, not a, you're not allowed to do that Josh oh, you have I, to pick a side yeah uh-huh yeah you know how this works let's see how that goes it's not that I'm a fence sitter it's literally one of these things I can make I a, could see it yeah. I would probably pull the trigger on this trade if you told me I could trade Jaiasi's artist uh Emmanuel Boateng and a reduced amount of Tam and Jam and no draft pick I get to keep the draft pick yeah. if I'm giving you Emmanuel Boateng, all right? And I get to pull back some of the cash that I was going to give you. Emmanuel Boateng is worth some money. He's not a starter on the LA Galaxy. I know he was last year, and that's where everybody's trying to value him as mm-hmm. a starter, but he's not a starter. Yeah, and I think I think that's that might take a similar. I, I'd, I would happily do this trade, Giassi and Boateng, and, and a little bit of cash or less cash than you would without Boateng in order to get Kamara because... I get it. We love our players, but we don't want to overvalue them. And, and I think Boateng, if you looked at the numbers, looked at the goals they give you, look at the assists, uh, Kamara gives you more than both of those guys combined. Right. And he's a starter and he's a striker, which you need. So so he checks all those boxes. So I think you, it's a no-brainer to make that move. Uh, fans don't like seeing one of their favorite players, especially because he got those good minutes. Right. And you see the hustle that he puts out on the field. Yep. And, and you, you want to root for Boateng, but you almost have to separate it. Uh, on the show, Guys in Shorts, we talk about the Lakers a lot and the young core. And you have your Julius Randle and Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance. And there's all this talk about the young core. Well, at the some point, these guys aren't going to win you the championship. They're not, the Lakers aren't winning a championship on the backs of these guys, so they start shopping them around. And now that they're shopping them around, other teams are saying, I'm sorry, you want what for these guys? But right. The Lakers hold these guys like they're 
you know, they're champions already when they haven't had a, a winning season in several years. Right. So I think we just need to pump the brakes and be a little careful that Emmanuel, we're not going to win an MLS Cup on the shoulders of Emmanuel Boateng. No. We love him. He's a hustle, a hustle guy. We want him to succeed. I'd love for him to develop, but I don't think he's, again, like I said, we're not winning an MLS Cup on his shoulders. So if we can get someone who puts bo- balls in the back of the net for us, we, we got to go for it. All right. I think we got a phone call too. Uh, 323, who's this? Hey, uh, this is Eddie. Uh, you might know me as Eduardo on Twitter. Hey, Eddie. Thanks for calling in, buddy. What can we do for you, sir? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, bring up the topic about the striker situation, how everyone's freaking out. I uh, just wanted to give a li- everyone a little history about Shiggy Smith. Uh, everyone might forget that at one point he was part of the team that brought in Carlos Ruiz, which yep. nobody knew who he was. And then he went down to Columbus, and he actually won a title with, I think, Alejandro Moreno who was their forward that scored, like, nine goals. And then he went up to Seattle, and he discovered uh, Freddy Montero, which nobody had heard of right. until he brought him in. So, I mean, From the I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I think nobody else should be worried I think we should all trust him. All right, all right, Eddie, you're breaking up there. No, I, I agree. I agree with you 100. percent There's no need to panic right now, and we appreciate the phone call. If anybody else wants to call in, listen, our phone lines are open. They're almost always open, and I'll just ignore you if I don't want to talk to you. So it's uh, <laughs> seven one four. Uh, excuse me. Let's just scratch that and start over again. <laughs> you were going to give your personal. I was. I was n- going to be like, call me on my cell phone. Nine four nine seven three four four two one seven is our number here. No, okay. So here's the thing about Ima Boateng. This is where I start to be like, okay, I don't want to do this trade because Emmanuel Boateng is going to be one of the game-changer subs in Major yes. League Soccer. And that's why he's worth something to the LA Galaxy and why maybe you don't let him go. Because, let's face it, he was a guy who got tired in the 60th minute because he doesn't well, have the reserves. That was the running right? joke. Is, right. Who's the first sub going to be? Of it's course gonna it's going to be yeah, yeah, yeah Every time. So, um, so, and you understand that. And listen, I get it. And it makes sense. But, I mean, he really will be a better sub than he is a 90-minute a player. And so, that's where it, it's sort of pumping the brakes. Now, having said that... Giassi Zardis right now, and this is what I was trying to a- explain as well. People are saying, why isn't Giassi Zardis enough? Giassi Zardis, Jam and Tam, draft pick, sure, whatever, yeah. then, and take it and be done. And I'll tell you why. Because Giassi Zardis is a bench player on the LA Galaxy right now as well. Mm-hmm. And after his season last year... His stock is down. His stock is way down. It goes back to that same Lakers conversation. I mean, other teams have eyeballs. They, they can look at, right. at the, what he was able to do. They know he's been pushed to right back. They know that the goals weren't there. Something happened after that injury with the U.S. national team. He's not the same player. And I'm, I'm Team Giassi. I want him to succeed. Uh, whenever there's a soccer game on TV, my five-year-old daughter asks, where's Giassi? Right. So we are, we, I want Giassi to do well, but he is not the same guy. And other teams know the drama that's going on with him being, you know, not in form. And so they're not going to the back up the bank and give you their best player because this isn't 2014 or 2013 Giassi. Yeah, I was going to say, and you can't just, you know, and, and you can't just move him across the hall yeah. like they did with Juan Pablo <laughs> and Hell as well. So, I mean, the LA Galaxy right now are stuck with him. And they, if, if they get the striker, which they're still trying to get, let's say that Giassi's artist stayed put mm-hmm. and then he didn't go anywhere. He's not a starter. There's no place for him to start. Where are you going to put him? Because you have Sebastian Legette who's starting, mm-hmm. all right, at least right now. Now, Sebastian Legette could, this is another topic that we could sort of dive into. Sebastian Legette was injured all last year. He could not play very well this it's year. It's possible, yeah. It's a possible. That's he's a scary not, thing. We saw what happened with Giassi. So, um, yeah, it's very possible that the same thing happens to Sebastian. I mean, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't. But. Yeah, and, and so that's sort of, that's something. But nonetheless, let's, so you sort of follow that along. Okay, so Sebastian Legette. Jonathan Dos Santos, he's starting. Nobody's putting, mm-hmm. pulling him out. Perry Kitchen is starting. All right. We all know that. He's the defensive midfielder now. And Roman Alessandrini's on the right-hand side. That's it. Giassi's artist doesn't have a place to play because he's not going to be the striker, whoever the striker is, unless you don't make a trade, and then Giassi's artist becomes the striker. is your striker. Mm-hmm. And then you get to decide. And, and all these people who are angry about Emmanuel Boateng, I asked them if they wanted to still have the same guys that they had last year, um, who scored, I think, a total of five goals yes. from the run of play between <laughs> Giovanni Dos Santos and, and Giassi's artist. So that's sort of where you have to be. And again, if you can guarantee me that we play Real Salt Lake every week, then I will. I do not want to get rid of Emmanuel Boateng. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a Real Salt Lake killer for sure. <laughs> the owner of Real Salt Lake. <laughs> exactly. That's how it works. Um, but no, I mean, you know, and I get it. 
you know, I get it. It comes on the heels of AJ Delagars, and I'm not comparing Emmanuel Boateng and AJ Delagars. There's really no one mm -hmm. that I think of in the history, maybe of the LA Galaxy. You have Landon Donovan, um, you know, Cienfuegos, but that wasn't a long term. That wasn't that long. He's, yeah. he's a legend for many reasons. Kobe yes. Jones. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are some of the things. But AJ Delagars had just sort of captured everybody's hearts. Yes. And so you understand. Mike McGee maybe was up there as a fan favorite when yeah. he got traded for Robbie and, Rogers. And and the issue, well, it comes all comes back to Robbie <laughs> Rogers. Uh, with AJ Delagarza, when he went, Robbie Rogers was hurt. We didn't have a right back. So so we were getting rid of someone who was beloved and not having a, a person in that position. So AJ Delagarza at the time was a useful player. He could have been used by the LA Galaxy. If Boateng goes, like you said, he's not the he's not in the starting midfield. So we'd be getting rid of a bench player and hopefully getting an asset who would be starting. So uh, it's difficult to compare the two because because I I the the anger behind AJ Delagarza part of that is because he could have been a starter, could have been a useful part of the team. Uh Boateng if he goes and we get Kamara, then then it's a non-issue. Yeah, Jeff Wilson also, by the way, oh, is in the course. chat room. Jeff's there. Yeah, nice. Je and he says you just swipe some of those bobbleheads for the studio. So I'll be <laughs> hey, I'll be frisking you on your way I was out. Say, to make text sure. me that. That's not supposed to be in the <laughs> chat room. <Well>, Jeff, yeah. <laughs> Jeff doesn't get it. He doesn't. Add it. Hey, Jeff, it's good to see you. All right, um, let's see. It, no, it is it is one of those things. And listen, Jossie's artist is not good enough, and it's certainly not good enough to command any sort of thing. The Galaxy almost need to pay Columbus to take him, and that's where you get the jam and the tans yes. that come in. That's as essentially well. what they're doing because you're looking. They're doing him a favor because you're looking at a player, by the way with Ola Kamara, who made, I think, $480,000 last year, or just barely over, I think, designated player status in, in order to make it, you know, so it wasn't a ton of money. Um, he's so really that's less than what that's Giassi's less than what Giassi's being, paid. being paid. So five twenty two for Giassi. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're really comparable in that case. So the salaries are comparable. So you'd say, oh well, it's a one for one, and it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not one for when one. You look at the goals over the past two seasons. I mean, Kamara has been in the top five in goals scored, and he unfortunately can't say that about Giassi. No, and and, and yeah, twenty fourteen was a great year for Giassi's mm -hmm. artists. Everybody acknowledges that. Nobody's going to disagree. Um, Landon Donovan and Robbie Keane made that mm -hmm. um sort of one of those things so it, it's it's it, it just hasn't been the same since and that's sort of and i've also seen people say well if giassi puts it together or if giassi you know if we get a healthy giassi and you know someone who could you know be coached and get the support behind him but none of those things are guaranteed uh, and granted kamara could come over here and have a dud of a season but we just witnessed giassi have a dud of a season so it'd really be a wash if we were to swap him because you can't bet on that. So give me the guy who's scored, you know, been in the top five in scoring two years over the guy who's not as much as we want him to succeed. We got to go over what we want to what's actually a reality. Let's see uh, if we have another, uh, another phone call here. 805, are you there? I hear yeah. You. Okay. Okay. There you go. Okay. You are good. Make sure you turn down the volume. I feel, I always feel so professional when I say this, turn down the volume on your radio or always your computer. To say right? That, right? Yeah, exactly. Whenever you call us. All right. 805. Uh, who's this? This is uh, Tyler, uh, Tycon21. Hey, Tyler. It's, it's awesome to talk hey, to you. Up? Thanks for calling in, buddy. What do you got for me? All right. I want to talk to you about the back line because I'm still i still not sold on it. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I like the acquisition still of David Bingham. You know, I feel like maybe he just had one down year with San Jose. But I still think, you know, he's a quality uh, MLS goalkeeper. But I'm still not sold with, you know, oh. Ashley Cole being 37 years old. Uh, Shelvick coming from Norway, you know, from what I've, my research I've done, he's, you know, was a reserve defender for, you know, in Norway, which uh, is arguably a step down in, in league quality from MLS. Right. And, you know, Ross Felcher, you know, I don't know how much he's played the last two years, but it looks like, you know, he's had some injuries and he hasn't played much. Uh, and, and, you know, Daniel Starris obviously had a, a down year this past season. So I'm just, I'm still not sold on this back line. And I, you know, that was one of the biggest issues besides scoring for the LA Galaxy. I, I think, Tyler, I, I think that, at least in my opinion, I'm, I'm okay with the changes that Siggy made. I don't think that any of these guys are, you know, unbelievable players. And I would never want to claim that they were unbelievable players. They're, they're not. Um, but I think they're yeah. solid enough in Major League Soccer. And listen, I, Ashley Cole's always a gamble, and we talked about that. I, I mean, you know, right now you're going to have yeah. Dave Romney, or you could have Shelvick go there. The the thing that I'm okay with, and why I'm okay with this backline, and why I think it's solid, is that everybody plays other positions. And so I feel like that there is a mix and match, just a Rubik cube sort of answer here. <laughs> keep that you, twisting, yeah, keep, keep twisting. twisting until you get all the colors that you want. Um, that that can that can solve the problems for the galaxy. I mean, I don't know that Siani starts right now. I know a lot of people are sort of talking about whether. 
it's him or Steris. Um, you know, does Romney find his way back in there again? Are Steris and Romney a better pairing? And does Shelvek move out to the left-hand side? All those are possible, yeah. you know, sort of formations and ways. And that's why I'm okay with it. I agree with you. I don't think it's a home run, mm-hmm. right? A- Eric, what do you... It's, it's not a no-brainer. So I understand what you're saying. You don't look at all these pickups and say, wow, the Galaxy nailed it because they're unproven. And again, if these guys are not getting regular minutes in Norway or Felcher wasn't getting regular minutes, it's it's a gamble. You don't know exactly what you're getting. But at the same time, you look at last season and all the goals that the Galaxy gave up and they basically needed to change everything that's going on back there. And they made a change. So whether it works out or not, the fact that they're they're trying to correct it by making a change is something. And then I think I solved our, our striker issue. Yeah. Put Dave Romney up there. Dave Romney he scored, he scored some a bunch of goals. There we go. Tyler, that's the answer. Yeah, that's put, the answer. Anything else for yeah. us? Yeah. Um I, I think that's it. I appreciate you answering my, my question and taking my call. As always. Thanks, Great to Tyler. talk to you. Thanks for calling in. All right. Let's go. If you're uh, still interested in calling to the show, the show the number is up there on the screen, 949-734-4217. I saw we missed some of them in there while we were talking. I will do my best to sort of, uh, again, sort of... Josh is working hard here, Please, I have to do it all. He's doing it all. I have, He's pushing I, all the buttons. I have to push the buttons. Yeah. People are asking why there's headlights shining in. There's not headlights. It's actually the reflection <laughs> of our studio lights. I haven't figured out that particular problem with the glass wall on one side and studio lights on the other side. Side, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Eric, Eric, and I are Listen, looking at this nice clock that I have in here. Now. It's impressive. I like the clock. I like the on air. I'm glad I got to be a part of the the inaugural on air lighting. We, we keep <laughs> pretending to be professionals here. That's what I say. Fake Just until you make it. Fake it. Well, that's going to be a while. I have a feeling. Um, absolutely. All right. So no, I mean that's where it is. So again, we go back to Boateng, and I just want to sort of close this up and keep. You know, I know people are panicked about it. I think if you're the Galaxy. You trade anything that you need to trade in order to get somebody like Kamara. Kamara is an excellent strike. He's he. It's okay. I don't want to say excellent because people always yell at me about my like superlatives <laughs> and how I classify. He's a very good striker. He's a guy who's going to give you goals. You know what you're getting. Yes, and you and the Galaxy need goals. And mm-hmm. he's a nine. You're going to be able to work with him. And I think Giovanni dos Santos and Ola Kamara are really good. Um, you know, sort yeah. of pairing there. The other thing we have to look at is uh, the Rodrigo Aguirre as well. Um, it's now sort of coming out, and I had to go on Twitter and calm everybody down again whenever I said that the Galaxy were, were maybe... There was reports that basically the Galaxy's move for Aguirre got blocked by another team. All right, we're okay. hearing possibly that Montreal might have had the discovery rights on discovery Aguirre. Discovery rights. Right, which oh. you can usually, like, pay off whenever okay. it happens, but... It seems like Montreal may have also wanted when that they player. Want a when they want, then yeah, they were like, "Hey, there's we'll... a reason why he's on the discovery list." Yeah, okay. and there is. And 23 year old Uruguayan, we've talked about him before. Um, he has a history of some injuries, which maybe is. But again, I've I, this is I know this is what happens when I do two <laughs> podcasts every week. I say the same stuff over and over again. You if dance you're... on both sides of the fence. <laughs> I do, I do. But um, the LA Galaxy need to take a gamble on somebody. Somebody is going to get gambled on in this, and they've taken some gambles, I think, on some defenders. Um, I think they've taken some gambles on the depth that they have in midfield because they have 700 million midfielders. <laughs> uh, I was told by one person who's very close to the team, uh, we've got midfielders for days. All right. We've got all- <laughs> that's an official, that's, official statement. That's right. We, LA Galaxy. There we go. Uh, we've got midfielders for days. That's what they said. All right. looks like we got a, uh, another phone call here. Uh, who's this? Hi, this is Julio. Julio. Thanks for calling in Julio. What can we do for you, sir? Um, have you guys talked about the, like the Chris Pontius thing and the Lucas, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Luis Lopez goalkeeper okay, situation? So let's, let's, I'm glad you brought up Lu- Luis Lopez cause it wasn't something I was going to be talking about and I'll tell you why I wasn't going to be talking about it, but we can, we can get to both of these. They were coming up. So let's go with it. Do you, do you have a specific question maybe? And then we can segue into it. What, any questions about it or just overall status? Um, overall status. All right. What was the goalkeeper's name again? I was Luis Lopez. That's what it is. Okay, Luis That's why Lopez. I'm here. I'm glad I could help. Thank Josh. you. I was, I was always doing it. And I looked at the... I did do some investigation. All right, so uh, you, we'll, we'll go ahead. Julio, we're going to answer that question right now as we sort of uh, transition into it. So thanks for the call. We're going to do that. All right, so going with Julio and talking about Chris Pontius. Now, let's go back to almost the end of the season in 2017. I was having a conversation with somebody. And somebody tells me, hey, you know Chris Pontius, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah, he plays over at Philadelphia. He played for DC United forever. I always associate associate him with DC, with DC United. United. Right. Mm-hmm. And he, and he basically played the last two seasons, but he was with DC United from like 2009 to mm-hmm. 2015, I think, and mm-hmm. played 16, 17 in Philadelphia. Um, somebody goes, Hey, you know, Chris Pontius? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, he wants to come to Los Angeles. And I'm like, Oh really? And they're like, yeah, and he's a free agent. And I'm like, well, does he want to come to LAFC or the LA galaxy? And they're like, yep, either. 
He does. It doesn't matter. He just <laughs> wants to be close home. to home. He because he's this is a guy who's from Yorba Linda. Yeah, so um, Servite High School. Yes, yeah, Servite High Local High School. Yeah, he went. He played on I think the Irvine Strikers, mm-hmm. which you know just based, we're in Tustin yeah. where we're recording in Irvine. Just we're over in there. Chris Pontius country. That's right. What you're saying we're very close to Chris Pontius kind of uh, Chris Pontius country. Um, by the way, one of his nicknames was Pontius Nom Nom. Okay, just I don't okay. know Ponty Nom Ponty. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna was, leave that one. Uh, alone. I don't know either. It was one of those <laughs> things. I was kept looking at all this stuff. But uh, Chris Pontius, who's 30 years old. Um, wanted to come to L.A. Now, it looks like, and uh, I believe it was uh, Paul Tenorio, or it was one of the wonderful reporters. I'm sure I screwed up whoever said it, and I apologize. But um, they basically came out and said that, uh, and I think it was Tenorio, he comes out and says that um, the L.A. Galaxy are the likely destination for Chris Pontius. He's a free agent. I don't think he's going to cost a ton of money for the L.A. Galaxy, and he might be in a position of need. And this ties back, for me, back into Boateng, back into Zardis getting traded and stuff like that. It links it all together. It links, and so that's what I put a tweet out, and then people got mad at me for like linking rumors together. <laughs> I, I apologize for trying to be smart. Um, <laughs> if you go and you trade Emmanuel Boateng, you trade him with Jossi Zardis, you trade your cha- your jam and your tam. Hopefully, you keep your draft pick and you pick uh, you know another striker. I would guess that that was sort of you get Ola Kamara. Yeah, you just lost a two left sided midfielders that you could have played there. You could have played Jossi Zardis there. You could have mm-hmm. played Emmanuel Boateng there. All right. Now they're not the starters because Sebastian Lejet is probably there. But whenever again we talk about Jonathan Dos Santos and Gio Dos Santos leaving, you're going to have Sebastian Lejet probably fill into that so middle spot. Shift, yeah. Right. And so he's going to come in. So you're going to need somebody over there. Well, Boateng is the likely guy. But if you traded him, you don't have him anymore. And Zardis, and you traded him, you don't have him anymore. Chris Pontius, left-sided attacking midfielder. He fits perfectly into that spot. He played in the last two years for Philadelphia Union because I went back and sort of looked at it and was like, hey, you know, Chris Pontius looks like uh, he's had a lot of injuries. He's a really mm. injury-prone guy. The last two seasons, he's played in 63 games. Wow. That's not an injury guy. That's yeah. a guy who's been, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a guy a... who's been playing. Um, and he's been scoring goals, too. Um, you know, See, that's, that's interesting because... W- w- Again, I always associate him with DC United, and I never remember thinking uh, when the Galaxy played DC United, oh, we got to worry about Chris Pania. So I think that's part of why people may be, people may be up in arms and not crazy about this because – are, you're not really getting an elite guy, but do we need an elite guy? I mean, or is he going to be a bench player he's a bench, and fill that role? Yeah, he's a bench player. Mm-hmm. He's a role player. Yeah. And at 30 years old, you'd expect that. But he scored, in 2016, he scored 12 goals for Philadelphia, all right? And then he scored two more, goals. More than Jassy. Two goals in 2017. Again, different. About the same as Jassy. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to say. <laughs> um, 2,253 minutes. Not a guy who, you know, a bunch of things. Uh, six assists in both seasons just in the last two years. So this is a guy who, in his entire career, has played in 215 games. Started 185. Has 45 goals. 29 assists. All right? Over 16,000 minutes in Major League Soccer. How do you not want yeah. this guy on your team if you're going to move Boateng? That makes yeah. sense to me. And and. and you need to fill out your roster with MLS veterans and guys who know the league and know their way around. Uh, he'd be a leader in the locker room, likely uh, given the, the some of the youth that the Galaxy has. And I, I've had a, a friend who's a LAFC season ticket holder, and he's giving me a hard time. Right. Uh, but I said, you're, you're eventually you have eleven players. You're going to need to start filling out the roster with the you know Baggio Husidiches and the Chris Pontiuses of the world. Yeah. Y- you need those guys. They're not it, all sexy. It, yeah. Exactly. I got, I got, you need those guys on your team. I have people giving me crap. I tweet out the stories and basically all the people the LA Galaxy have signed: uh, uh, Perry Kitchen, mm-hmm. uh, David Bingham, yeah, Savano Carrasco. None of those are sexy. <laughs> there's there's no sexy. I mean, you know, I'm, well, uh, Alex Morgan's attached to one of them, so I guess that, that's the, could, that's the sexiest stretch. as it gets. All right, that's as sexy as. It as it gets um so you know you go you go into this and yeah it's not sexy and chris pontius although from an overall appearance look is a sexy man I'm <laughs> again, th- this is not the guy from jackass by the way yeah i was gonna we say we had that discussion we, on twitter we, we did and, and it's not um this is this is the guy again a local guy i mean this is a guy who really i think galaxy fans could really get behind he everywhere he's gone people have loved him mm-hmm. i think if he comes to the galaxy yeah, he, I know, he, he could be great yeah absolutely he was he's beloved where he went so you have to take that into consideration also people wouldn't know you know, people weren't trying to ship him out. So that, you know, you're getting a veteran and I think you need that. I'm, I'm telling everybody, if you don't go into the chat room in our live shows, whenever we do them on Thursdays, <laughs> and by the way, the audience is growing. You guys need to start getting in on the live shows. Nice. I know it's basically Thursdays at 7 p.m. I can almost guarantee you Thursdays at 7 p.m. I'm very good at that trying to keep that. If nothing so, else, you're punctual. That's right. So, you know, just not next Thursday. I always hate that. I always hate when that <laughs> now happens. Now that you set that up. Yeah, yeah. it's never going to work next Thursday, but uh, I'm going to be out of the country. We've talked about that. But anyway, this is where you go. So Chris Pontius is coming in as well. So this is a possibility. I'll say right now that it's very likely, but I see it likely if the other trade is made. If then. Yeah. Here's the thing. I'm going to tell everybody because everybody's expecting that there's going to be a move tomorrow. 
But I could tell everybody right now that there might not be a move tomorrow. The Yellow Galaxy could end up using that second pick, and then we will, of course, be smart people because I'm sure it's one of the people we talked about. Um, yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be great if it's no one we discussed and they just went total wild card off the board. Which which Sagi has possible. been known to do, by the way. And, and with these draft picks, I mean, these guys are all showing up at the top of these mock drafts, but in reality... You know, who really knows what's in these teams' minds when they're picking these guys? Yeah, no idea. And and that's sort of, again, you're, you're absolutely right. But they could do it. Now, if the LA Galaxy make a pick, and everybody's sort of going to be holding, like when, somebody asked me, well, when did the Galaxy have to, like, when was the last time they could make a trade? Literally, they could call time out whenever yeah. they go to make their pick and make a trade. That's impressive. Time out during the draft. Right. Second pick, and you're like, uh, okay, time out. We're done. They we're don't allow that in the conference call, I can imagine. <laughs> so just get, we're in the conference call stage. Let's get it on. Come on. Time. Time. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, who, who keeps the timer? Garber's over there with the stopwatch. Is that how it works? So um, so that's up in that. But if they make a second round pick, it doesn't mean the Ola Kamara deal is dead. In mm-hmm. fact, I would think. Well, then you shop that guy as part of the deal. You could shop him as part of the deal, or. It just means that you've added enough value with Boateng, with Chiasi, and with your Jam and Tam that you don't have to give up the draft pick. Or, and with Boateng in there, I expect the Jam and Tam to come down. I expect there to be yeah. less money going for the deal. Yeah, we would hope there'd be a trade-off there that you're not, that you, they're not asking you, additionally for Boateng. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, we're offering this much, you know, and by the way, we want more. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, oh, okay. That's um, an, yeah, if, if, that's, if that's what they're asking for, then that says a lot about how the league views Giassi's artists. It is, and that's sort of when we've talked about it on the show. That the reason that Giassi Zardes has not gone anywhere yet is because nobody has wanted him. Yeah, that's my favorite. We need to get rid of Giassi. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll. <laughs> Find someone who will take him. And well, that yeah. was that was another thing. Well, why don't why don't we trade uh, Joao Pedro? Okay. Um, <laughs> what, what are you going to get for him? What What are you going to get? Like you know, some a six pack of soda. I like Joao <laughs> Pedro. Okay, but there's no value there yeah. overall, and the Galaxy paid a ton of money. Mm-hmm. I mean, six hundred fifty thousand dollars, or up to one point five million. It depends on who you believe. That's a lot of money, and then you're—he's making no money on salary, so he doesn't yeah. cost you anything this year. This year is the year to just sort of keep him. It doesn't really matter. And like you said, with with uh, Geo and Jonah possibly leaving for a World Cup, uh, you shift. You possibly could shift uh, Legit to the center, but you also could plug uh, Pedro in the middle as well and keep Legit on the wing. So Pedro, you know, it's possible to use him. You know he's not he's not a total waste. No, no, got to stick up for my Portuguese. I, I was going to say there's there's some <laughs> real bias going on right now, so everybody needs to pump the brakes on that. So um, so that's that. Those are the scenarios. So don't freak out if there's no trade make. If the Galaxy and Eric, you pointed out a great sort of thing. They could include that person in the mm-hmm. trade. It's like hey, take this guy as well. Here's Especially if, it, if if you you go best available, it's a defender. If Siggy feels like his defensive line is set and he has the guys that he wants, and maybe Columbus is interested in one of these top talented players, then. Maybe they become part of the deal. I say things sometimes. I forget people are listening. People Uh-oh. are now uh, <laughs> criticizing. I think my uh, my Joel Pedro is worth a six pack of soda. <laughs> <sighs> it's worth more than that. Obviously, obviously <laughs> worth more than that. All right, let's see if we can uh, we can get another phone call in here. Eight one eight. Who's this? Hi, this is Mike. Mike, thanks for calling in. What can we do for you, sir? Well, I'm a big fan of the Galaxy. I've been a fan since I was six years old, and so I mean, I bleed uh, blue and gold. So I'm kind, of, I'm kind of worried about this upcoming season, um, especially some of the players' with contributions. I mean, no offense to Jazzy Sardi, too, but I mean, I think a lot of us here in LA are worried from his uh, poor performance from last year. Well, I mean, here's so here, we're just, we're, here, here's my thing about Jossie Zardis is that I, I really don't expect him to be on this team whenever it starts at this, the beginning of the season. Um, I just don't, and I, I don't see a way. It feels like they built this team without him in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels like they've they've built around him almost, in ter- not like around him, like put pieces. They built like the team, like sort of like, hey, Jossie, you just keep moving to the left. <laughs> Let's keep, keep putting murals of your uh, yeah, yeah. We're gonna keep this appearance, yeah, yeah, but keep keep moving left a little bit further, a little <laughs> bit further. You know, one of those guys. And so I feel that's how what they've done with Jossie's right. artists. And so you know, for I, I would say the worry comes in if he stays because he knows the galaxy have been shopping that, him. That's what I was gonna say. If they've been shopping him for over a year, yeah. and and he knows that then that's a difficult thing to come back in that locker room to know that you're not wanted. Uh, what's your motivation there? I mean, yeah. it may, may give him a chip on his shoulder, but that could break, that could break a player. Right. But that's also been kind of the same thing for the past couple of seasons too, where he's had that chip. On his shoulders. And I mean, as diehard LA fans, as, uh, you know, as, as I am and some other uh, LA fans too, galaxy fans, I mean, we kind of expect like high caliber performance. I mean, we can all agree that this last year was just a total disaster. And it was, an, it was an embarrassment to be honest. And so, sure, there's a new kind of, like, tenure. There's a new coach coming in. 
and it's fine, but still, we still expect kind of year in and year out to be you know, MLS, uh, basically top of the MLS uh, food chain. So that's not something that happened last year. So that kind of just worries me. So kind of we're just expecting just Jazzy Sarri to be out of here. So that's that's my hope. Is I, I don't I don't see him being a productive player for next year. Yeah, yeah, I think that's absolutely a, a spot on there. Thanks for the call. We appreciate it. All right, thank you. All right, there we go. Another one uh, in the uh, in the can there. So, uh, oh, they're they're coming hot and heavy. I, oh, really? I, oh, see, yeah. It's, I'm missing it's, it. See, I'm on the wrong end of the screen. Here. You're you're on the dumb end of the screen, <laughs> and it's a lot more fun over there. Let me tell you. Can I? I just want to be a guest on my podcast every <laughs> once in a while and just read the comments. Just show up, have a nice time, you know, and do that. Nine five one. Who's this? Hey, Josh, this is James. James, thanks for calling in. What can we do for you? Well, um, I don't know, because um, I guess Peter Vagin, is, he's still in the, he's a VP right now? Uh, he is a, he went back to the VP of soccer operations, which is a role he had so, under Bruce Arena. Yeah. So my thing is, why is he still there if we had a horrible season last year? And, I mean, you don't fire the guy, but he's still running the club. What message does that give other people around the league that we're keeping coaches and, and these executives that have done a very poor job? I mean, I think he was responsible for Siani signing, which last year we saw that was a complete disaster. I mean, it's not entirely his fault. He was out of shape. Right. But I think just at, in the professional level of football, what are we, what can we show our fans that, oh, so yeah, he had a horrible season last year, but yeah, let's, he can stay as a VP. But I mean, if it was any other sport, I mean, as soon as the team has one bad season, the VP goes and a lot of people go. But now the Galaxy were just giving them. I mean, I'm I'm all for second chances, but I think he's been around the team for too long. And I know he was like uh, in charge of the academy for some time. Right, he was and along with Chris Klein too. I mean, players, yeah, yeah. But how many players can we say that have come through the academy that have been impactful first team players? I mean, yes, our academy is still young. And I, I still believe in guys like Bradford, Jamison, and Lasseter. I still believe that they can have very good careers, especially Jamison. I think that he should be given a improved role this season. But I think, why don't we look somewhere else? Um, like other teams, I know they bring a lot of foreign uh, coaches to run their academies. And, and I'm all for the American coach, but I think if we have help from, even south of the border, we can get help from them and see how they've just developed world-class players and why aren't we doing that if we're the galaxy we pride ourselves on being the best of the best listen i I think that you're you're on to something in the terms of that the galaxy have missed local talent i don't think anybody's going to tell you that they haven't got that they've now they did a good job because everybody was over at chivas usa academy at one point mike munoz was there and they scooped them up and moved them over and mike munoz does a great job down at the la galaxy 2 now but he was an academy guy um so the galaxy has some good academy coaches and i think they have some good philosophies the bottom line is developing players is Really, really tough. I mean, yeah. I, I know that sounds simplistic, but it... <laughs> well, if you look at the number of academies in the world, uh, it, it's and it's like professional athletes. How many people play sports, but how many people actually become professional athletes? It's, you know, a fraction of a percent. And that same logic applies with your academies. Yes, you notice some young talent and you hope that they turn into something, but it's really a small percentage that actually true to make it. And you just hope uh, to get lucky on those. But to go back to, you know, his... Um, the Pete Vianis stuff. Vianis yeah, I want to touch on that too. Uh, from the outside, uh, yes, of course, given the season they had last season, seeing him let go would have been, I think, a welcome sight for a lot of Galaxy fans. But the way I look at it, viewing it from the outside, having him shift over in position, it's kind of like office space with Milton where they send him to the basement. You keep, get to keep your your stapler. You know, there's a glitch in the system. We'll keep paying you, but we're going to handcuff you and not really allow it. And that's the way it looks to me. It looks like he's not really making the moves. But again, that's just the I, perspective I, I, from the outside. I, I will tell you from the inside, um, from people that I've talked to, I think that he's still trying to influence some of this. I just don't think he's having as much success. So you have Siggy Schmidt, Dominic Kinnear, and Kurt Schmidt being able to that's overrule it's, it's things. Di- I, I don't it's imagine different. him winning the room with that. With no, 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 no. And I, I don't think so. Um, so yeah, listen, we've gone over the Pete Vianis thing a, mi- a million times in terms of you know why he's still there. And he, the guy got demoted. Uh, he didn't lose his healthcare coverage, nor did he lose his parking <laughs> spot. So I don't know how much of a slap it is. But he was a general manager of the LA Galaxy, and he is no longer that. So they actually don't have one 
actually. There is no general manager. Uh, Siggy Schmidt is in charge of player personnel, along with Kurt Schmidt. <laughs> Read between the lines. That's right. How, so, how you'd like on how, that one. I, I, nobody wanted to be the GM, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Um, all right. I think that about does it for all of our phone calls. I still want to get to some things before we come in, but I really appreciate everybody calling in. That was awesome. You guys were really killing it. Callers brought it tonight. Yeah, I know. Well, it was because of you. You brought, of course, a, you brought a following. Course. These are all friends of mine. That's right. You paid them all <laughs> to, to be entertaining tonight, and I, I appreciate that. Um, no, whenever you, you, you look at the Galaxy and, and sort of what happens now, and again, we talked about the fact that the Galaxy are going to... Um, the Galaxy ha- are going to preseason training. That starts on Monday. Um, on Saturday is MLS Media Day. So I will be covering the team, uh, at least some of the LA Galaxy players, as well as some of the guys from around the league. That'll happen. Then on Sunday is the LA Galaxy's kit launch party that is at downtown LA. That's in downtown LA at the Novo at LA Live. Um, there's going to be some DJ sets and some other things there. And they it's for season ticket holders. And basically, they're going to debut the new... Uh, home kit, and that is the the, 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 the kit that no one's seen. Correct? The kit. That, <laughs> well, let's get to that. All right, that's that's an that's an important thing to sort of pay attention to. Um, there is a billboard. I don't know exactly where it is, but it is sometime, somewhere in the South <laughs> Southland area. Um, and with that billboard is the LA Galaxy's new kit on it. Um, now, I would imagine that if you're ordering a billboard and you go to put it up, that it probably takes some time to get done. And a lot of hoops to jump through. A lot through, of hoops probably. to jump through and all that stuff. I don't want to throw the Galaxy under the bus, although it seems like it's a little bit of a misstep. But the LA Galaxy, that is their official kit. And mm. uh, they've been able to sort of you know confirm that here or there um, through different channels. That's, that's yeah. the kit. Uh, it is... And I don't know if people know this, and this was brought to my attention because I am not a, a student of the older kits, but it is a student of the, uh, or it is a a offshoot of the 2006 home kit. Now, those were the old colors, the green and the, the black. It was, uh, yeah, the green and uh, yeah, yellow yellow Ye- kit with yep. the green sash and then black outline where the two uh, lines were. So, yeah, it's, it's essentially the 2006 template. With uh, 2018 colors, yeah, which is which is kind of cool. So yeah. if you like the throwback there, and by the way, I saw the leak. There was a leaked picture of yes. it before it came out on the and billboard, that, and that's the the thing. You can't be too upset at the galaxy because the leak uh, came out before the billboard, or, or or at least as long as jerseys have been around, these leaks are happening. As people have access to these jerseys, the leaks are going to come out. So. Um, you know, there wasn't an official release of the jersey, and the Galaxy are still saving that for those season ticket holders. So, so I don't think you could be too mad at that. Hmm. The, the jersey was going to be available at some point. This is this is the crazy thing that everybody who is listening to this podcast, who's watching us live, and all this thing. Here is the crazy thing: most people don't pay any attention to this <laughs> podcast or to social media or to Facebook or anything like that. That is the majority. I would say the majority of ticket holders. Are those people? So they're going to be people yeah. who go to the season ticket. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Yep. All right, and they're going to be all new to them. They're going to be very excited. <laughs> they're going to be ecstatic. It's going to yeah. be great. It's going to be a great night. You're supposed to mingle with the players. All right. Yeah. And and that's the funny thing. You know, going back to jersey aesthetics here, it's kind of my thing. Uh, someone is. People are hating on the sash, and and the Galaxy have had that as a part of their jersey. I mean, do you want just a, a white Hanes T-shirt with Herbalife Nutrition on it? I mean, it? that's sort of if you go back. <laughs> to, <laughs> gotta have something. If you go back to the David Beckham days, and then the two thousand seven, there was still, some, was still some trim, but yeah. there was no sash. Yeah, the sash is a new, th- but it, new-ish. it's a newish throwback. <laughs> All right, so it, it's fine. It is what it is, and and that's how it is. And again, I am this person. I know there's lots of people who see something new. And don't like it. And they're like, oh, it that, grows on you. that's horrible. And then it grows on them. <laughs> that was the Galaxy's last home kit. Yeah. I didn't like it at first. And I came around. And you came around. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's good. For me, I love everything right away. <laughs> and then I get disgusted with it later. So right now, I'm very happy with the other nice. Galaxy's home kit. And by the way, the home kit is the one that you should actually pay attention to because they very, yeah. very rarely wear the blues. Yeah, other right? teams really don't wear white often. And that's sort of the whole thing. If anybody does their home colors, like it's usually a solid color, mm-hmm. and so that means the galaxy will wear white against that yep. solid color. Home team gets to pick what they want to wear. I think they should go blue every once in a while at home. You know, that the NBA is doing that. They're doing like color on color matchups where <laughs> teams are wearing their their colors at home, and I think that that'd be kind of cool treat to the fans. Wear the different jerseys every once in a while. See, and there's people on here who are saying just bring back the old colors. Bring back the old colors. Go throwback. I'll be. I, no, I don't. I don't want to go. I don't want to go back there. All right. Some of those. Some of those kits. Remember the third kit that was the, the based on the LA flag. That yeah. Yeah. That, I hated that one. <laughs> See, I, I enjoyed it. And you enjoyed it. I'm sure I enjoyed it because it was. I felt like it was a nod to uh, the '96 kit, which again which I, was, I again, agree with 100. Graffiti. Yes, it was graffiti. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was fire. All right. That's that's what it was. Um. But no, I mean that's and, and that's it. The, to date, the best kit the Galaxy ever had 
was the third, at least in my the mind. The LAFC kit. That, that basically <laughs> what LAFC has stolen from the LA Galaxy um, is that that dark, oh, it was black basically, although it was called a blue, the it was darkish, a dark, dark, yeah. dark blue um, with the gold trim on mm. it. And it looked, that's still one of my favorite kits that they ever had. So um, that's really good. The, the only thing that I still have a complaint about, and um, this is not, uh, this complaint is is something that I think is, is still valid now. Is the one stupid star on the uh, <laughs> yes? Listen, I, I don't, agree with that. Guess who also has one star? Eric Toronto has yeah. one star. Okay, because they just won and they have a nice <laughs> big one, and it's I think it's a different color. Maybe it's well, silver. I think that's the the frustrating part is that Toronto gets a bigger star than we have for their their one cup as opposed to the five. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was an odd an odd choice. I, I get it to the to the extent that. You're not going to have five, 30 different stars, but at the same time, do five wait, stars. Wait until after the five. Go, go, to, we, to, yeah. yeah when it gets to six, then, then convert. Change it. Yeah. Oh, man. We fixed crazy. it. MLS, if you're listening. Yeah, MLS. Just We'll take our <laughs> paycheck, too. <laughs> That's how it goes. All right. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of their side. You know what? We do have some questions from Twitter, so I want to get to those before we uh, end this whole thing as well. Um, it, we have a couple of them, and one from uh, MLS Ireland. I hope they're actually in Ireland, because I was like this. Fuck. Awesome. Um, Excuse me. And they said, uh, hey, after last year, what is the expectations for this year with the new signings? Uh, I'll look forward to hearing the podcast as they are pretty good. No, oh, that nice. is that is not that is they didn't say good. Yeah. They said pretty good. Well, uh, it's better than, uh, you know, I've heard, you know, I listened and it was actually good. It's <laughs> better than that. <laughs> said, I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'm not that entertaining. And, and you, you didn't see that at all. All right. So they asked, what are the expectations for this year? It's to be better than last year. Yeah. Um, I think this team is already constructed in a way that they will be better than last year. Uh, they probably I, I won't, so. won't finish in last place in the league. Uh, maybe second to last. Maybe third to last. Maybe fourth to last. Mm-hmm. I actually think that this team, as it's, as it's created, if they get a striker, if they fill out the rest of the roster, which is the way I believe they're going to, which is get some more depth and add a couple more striker depth positions, if they do, they're fighting for a playoff position. All right. I don't know that they're going to be at the top of the West. I mean, you could get lucky. You never know. Yeah. This could be. But if it, everything I, clicks. It was a solid rebuild for me. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I think in years past, it's MLS Cup or bust. And we're spoiled. I think one of the callers mentioned it earlier. We're used to being at the top of the ladder. After eating some humble pie and finishing with that wooden spoon, I think, again, the goal this year is to be better than last year. And I think I think we need to tamp our expectations and fighting for a, a playoff spot exactly. That's what I would call that a success, given the, the issue that you had the last season. Fighting for a playoff spot, being in the hunt for the playoffs would make me happy as a fan. Right. It's difficult. A lot of people will say, well, we need to be the best. We need to win. You're not going to you know, be on a winning streak forever. We, we were fortunate to have the run that we had, but I think being in the hunt for the playoffs would be a success for the LA Galaxy this year. Yeah, it would be. And and that's okay to be that. From how horrible, giving up 67 goals last year, uh, you know, finishing below Minnesota United, which made me look like an idiot. Because I'm crazy. like, don't worry, you'll at that's least finish insane. above Minnesota United. Nope, didn't happen. Um, when They were better than Minnesota United, by the way. They just... Yeah, again, technicalities. Technicalities, right? (laughs) That's how it goes. Um, But when you look at all that stuff, I mean, that's how it goes. Now, it could be a 2009 year where you get in the playoffs and you, again, clicky, clicky, and next thing you know, you're at MLS Cup. Yeah, everything starts firing, all the, you know, someone catches fire if we were to get that striker. It could happen. It could happen. So that's sort of what it is. So that's my expectations. Now we go to uh, New Rule. New Rule, N-U-R-U-L. Okay. New rule. New rule sounds new rule. correct. New rule. Yeah. Okay, that's that's a little mm-hmm. different emphasis. Thank mm-hmm. you. Help help the white guy out. <laughs> um, so so new rule says um, that he goes. Uh, do you think the I think L A Galaxy two team striker uh, uh, Zubak Ethan Zubak uh, is good enough to be a squad player for the L A Galaxy because he did play uh, good and and had some assists last year. Well, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, Ethan Zubak, nineteen years old, super young, um, from Corona, California. So if you like the uh, the local kids, it's, home, it's a good guy to do that. Grown boy. Yep. Uh, four goals, twenty eight games played, two thousand seven. 22 minutes, 21 starts in, with uh, LA Galaxy 2. He is a guy who's on the cusp of being something. Now, could he get some minutes? I think maybe he might be a U.S. Open Cup guy. Uh, maybe he could get some minutes there, some substitute roles. But he's going to start making that transition. At 19, it's time <laughs> where you would hope that he would start getting senior team minutes. Now, is he the guy? Will he make it? Yeah. You don't he, know these things. That's why he needs he, to play. He feels a lot to me like an Ari Lasseter. Right. Ari Lasseter really shined at LA Galaxy 2. And you're waiting for him to get those first team minutes. And yet, for some reason, it it doesn't click. So um, maybe it's time for him to get those minutes, and we'll see if it works, see if it doesn't. 
but he seems very similar to Ari Lasseter to me. Yeah, New Rule also brings up, he goes, you know, the other striker that the Galaxy could go after is the other Kamara, the Kai Kamara, but uh, who's okay. now, I think, at Vancouver. Um, okay. I think I think he, if my... He, he, he doesn't wear out his welcome wherever he goes. So no, no, of course not. <laughs> I think not. that's he's, a bad idea. He's given, a team player. <laughs> yeah, given locker room issues that was, we've had. I was going to say, him and Jermaine away. Jones, yeah. they're really good guys to have in your locker <laughs> Jermaine room. Jermaine Jones, oh man. All right, uh, Brian Sousa uh, at Figuring Things Out, he Brian. says... Yeah, I was going to say... <laughs> uh, he says, uh, what's Joel Pedro's place on the team? I just traded him for a six-pack of soda, <laughs> if everybody remembers. See, he's, Brian's a Portuguese as well. we got to support our own. I was going to say, it, that's why you're not allowed to answer these questions. Um, <laughs> I'm exempt. Joel Pedro is a substitute. Um, he's not a starter. He probably won't be a starter. He could be a starter whenever, again, Jonathan goes away. He's a development guy. Uh, mm-hmm. he's, he's he's still young. He's young. He, young, youngish. 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 Uh, we'll, he's we'll not say. 19. Yeah. He's not 19. Yeah, he's like, what, 20? <laughs> 23. 23, yeah. In that neighborhood. Um, great guy. Really like him. I think he has a big upside, actually. I yeah. think the Galaxy were, I, the Galaxy got him to sort of invest in him. And so this use him has in the investment. Give him some substitute minutes. Um, let him develop. Let him get better. And if he can produce and eventually be a starter, that's great. And if the Galaxy can eventually sign or sell him, that's why they bought him. And I think last season, depending on who was on the field with him, you saw different draw Pedros. So um, given the new lineup that the Galaxy is going to have, we're going to see if he, if he improves. He got... You know, he kind of got dragged through the coals last season when he started. He had a difficult time. It looked like adjusting to MLS play. But as the season went on, I saw improvement. So I, I think, and again, of course, I'm biased. Yes. But uh, <laughs> but I think there's improvement there. He can become a solid MLS player uh, off the bench and hopefully develop into something. But I don't, I don't think he's a cast off. I wouldn't trade him for that six pack just yet. <laughs> just yet. <laughs> just yet. It's a, it's a 24 pack. You can get it at Costco. Okay, just enough. get the, the whole the whole crate thing there. You'll be good to go. They'll put in the box for you at the end. It'll be great. All right. Uh, let's see. Is that? I think that's it. I think that's I think it. we went an hour. I'm we, impressed. That wasn't bad. We had like two things to talk about and we made it last an hour. That sounds that's, sounds like the guys in shorts LA show. I was going <laughs> to say, we don't ever have anything to talk about on this podcast. No, the, the callers, you guys did great. Um, listen, okay, so let's go over real quick a schedule before I get Eric to tell you once again where you can find him and where you can uh, find the the podcast that he's on so many times um, uh, schedule for Corner of the Galaxy uh, I will be covering the events this weekend MLS Media Day I told you about and the LA Galaxy kit launch so I hope to see you there if you see me there say hi alright I'm there I'm approachable I'm not a mean person I'm very nice Eric can vouch I can confirm yeah, Josh is not a mean guy I threatened him to say that so it makes <laughs> it worked out well but no come, blink, blink twice if you need help <laughs> that's right that's right um, so, so yeah come up say hi to me so I will be there on Sunday night on Monday I leave for Scotland and then um, London actually so I'll be going to Glasgow Glasgow and then London, uh, maybe some Birmingham in between. Uh, this is all for a work trip, not related with Corner of the Galaxy, oh, that's unfortunately. No fun. And no, I may there's I may sneak away for a soccer game in London. So you just have to on the DL. I'm going to try. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to make it. I get back the following Monday, so the Monday show that we normally have will not happen. Next week's shows, Monday and Thursday, probably will not happen. However, I'm getting content from MLS Media Day, and I'm getting some content from the uh, from the jersey uh, unveiling on Sunday. I'm going to try to work those into something that can be shut out on Tuesday and Thursday, and I'll try to post it yep. from the UK and, and put it out there for everybody. Now, I'm going to try. I don't Sounds guarantee. Like I may be too tired. I may be too jet lagged. I don't want <laughs> to deal with it. Send the caveat. That's right. So, um, but you'll find that on the website. And of course, if you subscribe to our, our, our uh, SoundCloud or iTunes or any of those places, you'll get those podcasts when they come out. Um, again, and then the following Monday, that show isn't going to happen as well because I get back that day. So Kevin and I have talked about it, uh, Mr. Kevin Baxter of the LA Times, uh, and we have discussed that we will probably record on the 30th. So just a heads up. Of, uh, of sort of how that's going to go. But we're going to have plenty of stuff. I have some interviews lined up. I have some guys, once they're in training and once they're with the team all the time and the PR guys and are next 40, to them. That's what the countdown is for. Yeah, that's yeah, right. It's, it's not for us. It's for you. So it's, when you can get out there and start... Start getting in, in, in the trenches with these guys. That's right. So we do have that, and I plan on getting, you know, I have a long list of guys who are going to come on here. I certainly want to talk to Perry Kitchen and yeah, David there's Beckham. T- there's tons David of Beckham. New- <laughs> David Bingham. Or David Beckham. I'll he can t- come on. He, David Civil- You'll David allow it. Beckham can come on anytime he wants. So anyway, so that's uh, that's how it goes. Um, and so, yeah, so so that's sort of our schedule there, and we'll be back and just sort of follow Twitter and all that stuff, and I'll try to keep everybody updated even while I'm uh, overseas and, and doing all that stuff. All right, Eric, why don't you tell people where they can find you, and uh, and then we'll rock and roll, all right? All right, people can find me personally at GIS Hammer. Uh, they can follow uh, our podcast, Guys in Shorts LA, on Twitter. It's at Guys in Shorts LA. You can also follow us on Instagram at Guys in Shorts Sports. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts and SoundCloud. We have a live show coming up on February 2nd at Steelcraft in Long Beach. So we'd love to see you out there supporting the galaxy and all things 
in Sports Los Angeles. And then, of course, we have our sister shows, Guys in Shorts FC, which you can find us on Twitter, at GIS Soccer Show. We have our uh, LA Kings-based show called The King's Realm. You can find that at, at King's Realm Pod. And then if you're into the LA Rams, we have a show called The Rams House, which is uh, you can find on Twitter at, at The Rams House. I think you guys I think are I got bus- everything. I think you guys are busier than me. I think we checked all the boxes. I mean, I think I'm, I'm, I'm only part of two or three two, of those. Two, that's right. <laughs> only two or three. That's right. You have a wonderful, you have a very forgiving wife, I can tell already. <laughs> all right. Uh, of course, if you're looking for me on the uh, on Twitter at Jay Guessman, J G U E S M A N, and of course at Galaxy Podcast, that's where you can find all the show Twitter, all the news about the galaxy, and then go to cornerofthegalaxy.com. Scarves have been ordered, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, they are being produced overseas. Uh, by the way, not like overseas, overseas where they know how to make scarves <laughs> in the United Kingdom, and we'll be heading nice. this direction a very, very soon. Scarf, Roughneck like. scarves are where we're going Beautiful. for this, which are they do a great job. So scarves are on their way; they're coming. All right. Uh, let's see. Cornerofthegalaxy.com got it. All that stuff. Open house on February seventeenth. I'll have more details for that. Star Squad, LA Galaxy, Star Squad, possibly Cosmo making an appearance. Uh, charity auction for Galaxy Foundation. All that fun stuff as well. All right. Four. Uh, thank you, Eric, for coming in. So I certainly appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. So for Mr. Eric Vieira. I'm Josh Gessman. You've been listening to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You have a great one. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. And for all of your independent LA Galaxy news, discussion, and entertainment, including this podcast, head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. Fans, thanks for listening. We ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Arajo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.